the people lifted their voices to the heavens and shouted, Helia, Helia, where's my Helia? And lo unto them, an angel of the Lord, come to us, gifted the people with an LD three-star ticket. A blessing, a blessing from the Lord. God be praised. That's right, gamers. If you didn't get it before, here's another opportunity at a free LD three-star. But who do you use it on? Let's go over the top light and dark monsters to choose from. Let's start with the big one, Helia. She, in my opinion, is the best LD three-star in the game and arguably the best three-star, period. She absolutely destroys PvE content. Paired with a couple damage dealers or some attack buffs, you will be speed clearing the majority of the content in this game. You might be struggling with dying to a boss in some dungeons. Well, Helia has the solution. Just kill the boss quicker. Speed runs is Helia's thing. She brings both brand and defense break with her second soul link skill. Not this one, don't use this one, it's useless. For perfect, consistent auto clears, I would highly suggest heading down to the auto button and turn off her Soul Link 1 skill so she never uses it and will only use that second Soul Link skill, which has the defense break and brand. This will be absolutely crucial for getting those consistent auto speedruns. She is a must-have in both White Shadow Castle and Naraka. For White Shadow Castle, she is crucial for these all-important speed clears, so that way you can get your dailies done quickly. And for Naraka, during the Dragon's Breath phase, you really need that extra brand and damage to get through that DPS check. You're going to want to build her high damage. Attack, crit damage, and attack on her slots 2, 4, and 6, with crit rate and accuracy substats. You want that extra accuracy in there to make sure that she never misses a crucial debuff. Now, of course, there are a lot of LD3 stars to choose from, and the other notably important LD3 star for you to have on your team is Tion. Tion is arguably better than Konamiya in almost every way, other than the fact that Tion is an LD and harder to get. Her S2 decreases your skill cooldowns on all of your monsters and summoners, allowing you to utilize those skills more often. On her skill 3, she can revive a dead teammate, but if everyone's alive, she'll be able to heal nearly 40% of your team's HP. When she uses this skill and no one needs to be revived, not only will they get healed, but Tion will decrease the cooldown of that same skill so that way they can use it again. The revive mechanic is extremely useful in both PvE dungeon content, especially the new Ruined Temple. But also, she is surprisingly good in PvP as well. Because her healing is based off the target's HP, you can put Tion with a bunch of tanks and knight class monsters who automatically generally have a lot of HP and it's going to keep those monsters alive for a long time. Tion is definitely great in PvP, at least at the lower levels, but as you start climbing, Tion's usability will drop more and more. As far as runes go, Tion is very forgiving to build. Because he doesn't scale off of HP, you can do a variety of things all tanky though. HP, defense, resistance, all of this together on an evasion set, I think is probably the best. Now, I would suggest only going for those two monsters, but I am going to throw out some notable mentions, especially for those that like to fill out the Pokédex with as many monsters as they can in their box. Let's start with the Light Golem, Grogu. No, not Grogu, Grogo. He is a light tank that never dies. You can use him in the Light Spire along with Lin and Tion. There's also the Light Imp, Taru. He's a big damage boy who can penetrate a monster's defense. This makes him good against bosses, but also might make him really good for a full hero area light team in the future. Just saying, thinking ahead. Dark Imp, Gorok. Gorok is also a great damage dealer that applies bleed. Use him in your Dark Spire team or even in Seal to apply Bleed Dot. The Dark Fairy Soren is also a decent pickup. Soren is a really fun monster that does really great damage, but also stuns a lot of things, making her pretty good at controlling those crowds in the Dark Spires. Now, of course, after I say all of that, I'm going to tell you what you should do. If you don't have Helia or Tion, go get them now, with Helia being the priority. If you have both, I would get another Helia for Awakening Pieces. I am personally not interested in filling out the entire LD 3-star Pokédex. I want to make sure that my monsters are as good as I can make them. 
Another reason is you can't put three-star monsters in the altar. So this ticket or summoning them again is really the only way that you're going to be able to get one of these monsters again for Awakening. But anyway, that's like my opinion, man. And if you disagree, you can meet me down in the comment section. My Discord link is in the description if you have any questions or if you just want to chat Summoner's War. Of course, if you've been enjoying my content but haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do that. And while you're down there, hit that bell notification so you know when I go live on YouTube. We have a lot of fun during our live streams. That's all for now. I'm Topher Smurf telling you to keep on gaming.